<clears throat> all right, hey, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, as always, we want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth and that do it well. And much peace, love, blessings, and many salutations to the elect. Um, I'm the brother Shapal. Brother Azamawa. And uh, man, the Lord allowed us to to come out here. And um, as you can see, we're in uh, West Texas, uh, Guadalupe Peak National Mountain. Uh, this is the highest natural point in Texas. Um, and that's actually the peak right there. You know, if brothers could see that. Let me see if I could. Yeah, that's the peak. We went up a different way. <laughs> no pun intended. Went up, went up a different way, you know. But um, it's all good. You know, we took a different trail than what we attended. But the Lord, you know, still blessed us with being able to see his, his creation, um, the magnitude of it, the beauty of it all. The peace and tranquility that we've had since we, you know, been been up here. I mean, it's just it's surreal, man. You know, the beauty and the the, the power of the Lord and His might, and His creation, and all this came by the way of the flood. Oh. You know, so this is just this is just a um, man. I must, I must uh, pan it around again. A testament of the Lord's judgment, bro. Yes. It's, and, and I know the camera won't do it justice at all, at all, but we're, you know, that's that's the the highest uh, natural point right there. That peak, what they call Guadalupe Peak, is about what like eighty seven hundred feet above elevation or sea level. Um, but yeah, man, the Lord is beautiful. The Lord is beautiful um, in everything that He does. You know, and there's there's uh, spiritual nuggets that we've picked up since we've been here. We done come across some crystals on the ground. You know, I got one right here. Yep, yeah, you got it. Polish it up. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, man. And what's crazy is, uh, you know, I was telling the brother Osmond Wolf that I had been out here before. This is my second time coming, and this was years ago before the truth. And uh, I had picked up a similar one. I still have it. It's, it's literally on my with all my other little stones that I, that I have on the um, on the um, on this little drawer uh, in the living room that I have. But yeah, man, um, just wanted to do a little sit down real quick. Um, do you got anything? Bro? Yeah, okay. it's uh, the Book of First Chronicles sixteen and eight. Give thanks unto Yahweh, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Mm. You see, and this is what we're doing through the Spirit, man. You know, and you know, all you sincere Akim and Akwaf, we, we constantly speak about, you know, Yahweh Bashmal Shah's works, you know, and um, as wicked and as decrepit and vile and disgusting this world is, you know, the Lord has still, you know, left behind a testament of his goodness, you know, and ultimately the elect is going to lay these things to mind. You know, looking at his creation and, 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 you know, and call it to mind. Like, there's a creator behind all this. Mm -hmm. And that's why it speaks about in Romans, the first chapter. You know, it speaks about how, um, I'm going to grab that real quick. This is Romans chapter 1. You know, and, and to think that the Lord gave all this to the to the people that he hate. Yeah, you know, yeah, you this said is, that This is in the hands of Esau, you know. Job 9, 24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Like, we don't have any say-so on who can climb this mountain or who not. Esau, he he does, right? But to think that the Lord has given all this to the to the nation of people that he hates, right? This gives us much more glory, you know, and hope to look unto, knowing that we're the people that he actually loves. So if he gives all this to them, just imagine what he's going to do for us, man. man. But this is uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse uh, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. That's right. So the invisible attributes, the, the, the power and the glory, the majesty of the Lord, right? And the spirit of the Lord is all being made manifest by what? By the things that's clearly seen in the physical. You see, it says, mm -hmm. even his eternal power. And Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You see, because, hey, the Lord has left behind, you know, once again, like we said, you know, beautiful testaments of his goodness, you know, and his power. 
you know, to where hey, you have the elect looking at these things and you got the wicked looking at these things. This is why scripture says that they're without excuse, man. You know, you're at the end of the day, you're going to be without excuse for not having, you know, not holding yourself accountable until this power that made all these things that made you, you mm -hmm. see, you know, but it's just a beautiful, it's, it's just beautiful being out here. You know, it's just probably like my fourth or fifth time, you know, hiking on the mountain, you know, but like it, it never gets old, man. It never gets old. And each time is, is more and more breathtaking, especially hey, you with, hey, you with a brother, man. Mm -hmm. You with a brother that understands like, you know, he understands you how about your mouth shot. You know, me and the brother, you know, shooting up prayers and, you know, like like I said, you know, picking up spiritual nuggets. You know, like, cause he, cause even though we we went on the wrong peak, the wrong mountain peak, you know, nonetheless it was still it's still beautiful. But mm -hmm. there's a particular like, there's a particular way you got to come up. You know, like yeah, there's yeah. a trail, there's a very uh, narrow path, and some like down there to the left of us, yeah. it was real steep. You know. It, it, <laughs> If if you slip, if you made a if you break if you made a wrong step, that's your ass, Mr. Post, man. You know, so and we know, you know, what scriptures say in Matthew the seventh chapter, second Ezra the seventh chapter that speaks about, you know, how the uh how the path is so narrow that uh one man can go there at once and it's and it's set in a dangerous place to fall. All right, so you know, spiritually, you know, extrapolating yeah, we and we trying to we trying to meet reach uh Mount Zion, man. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's a particular way to get there. You know, and, and we saw a whole bunch of shit on yeah, the trail. Yeah. You know, somebody, I guess they were walking their horse, you know, whatever. Hey, me and the brother, like, hey, you got to go through a lot of shit to get to the get to the prize, man. Mm -hmm. You know, so. <laughs> Come on, I got yeah. some. Um, yeah. Matthew 7. <clears throat> it's the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And verse 13. It says, enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. You know, in a straight, it like, well, let me read verse 14. It says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So, essentially, that word straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, being a difficult path. When we was walking up, you know, it was... <laughs> you kept quoting certain scriptures that second as your seven that that straight uh the narrow path is is so small can can but one man go there at once set in a dangerous place to fall like some of these some of these portions of this hike so far is is very dangerous bro mm -hmm. very dangerous the brother actually we was setting up the tripod and the camera to take a picture and he actually caught my arm because i had i had you know missed the step you know, in a, on the cliff, pretty much. And it wasn't like, you know, like a drop-off cliff, but it was steep. If I would have fell down that, I would have definitely been tumbling and rumbling my ass down it. Yeah. You know, so, hey, man, well, um, the scripture says that essentially, you know, a friend can be known um, um, in adversity, man. Yeah. You know, the brother was there to catch me. You know, we're bearing one another's burdens. We're, we're carrying the slack where other brothers might, you know, might, uh, you know be be lacking or whatever but yeah man like it says the straight gate that's 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 essentially the way and we're you know using this this um hike as a you know as a as a you know physical metaphor for that very thing you know because it's you know we're moving up it's it's sweaty it's uh you know the there's rocks everywhere it's it's not the most comfortable and we making jokes along the way. We're seeing just piles of shit, piles of horse shit along the way. And we're like, well, there's a the shit. We know we're on the right track. Right. Follow the shit. Follow the shit. You got to go through the shit to get to the top of the mountain, bro. Yeah. You know, so that's essentially going through, going through the straight gate, going through the hard times in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven and to be exalted to the peak, man. In order to rest. Yeah, get that rest. Because when you get to the top of the mountain, there's no more hiking. You, you you get to chill. You get to enjoy the scenery. You get to enjoy the view, the fruits of the labor of you climbing up to that very point. When you get to the top, there's there's no more. And like you you said, bro, the Lord is gonna exalt that high mountain in due season, man. Yeah. I got one for you. This is uh, Isaiah 43. First Chronicles 16. First Chronicles 16 and 10. It says, I'm starting verse 9 again. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him. Talk ye 
of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord Yahweh. Seek Yahweh and his strength. Seek his face continually. And this is the part. Remember his marvelous works that he have done. Hmm. You see? So, you know, this is part of it, man. Hey, just, just sometimes you got to set aside time. Hey, even Yahweh Shah, you know, he'll be around his disciples, you know, often. And, you know, the large multitude, they'll come listen to him. You know, but there'll be a lot of points to where Yahweh Shah, he'll just early in the morning retreat, go off to a mountain by himself. Right. You know, pray, talk to, talk to his heavenly father. You know, so... You know, so even us, man, hey, sometimes we got to, you know, kind of pull back, get secluded, you know, you know, retreat, you know, regather yourself, you know. So it says, remember his marvelous works that he have done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth, O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones, man. So uh, that's all I had on that one. God, I got some. God. This is the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 22. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. And like you said, bro, like the fact of the matter is that the Lord set this up for the heathen to enjoy, for Esau, Edom to enjoy, somebody that he, you know, hates, doesn't give a fuck about, you know? It's this beautiful creation, all this being set up just to be, you know, just to be burnt when it's all said and done. Yep burnt to smithereens you know it's you know it's crazy to fathom that the lord had all this set up but it shows you that it's, it's really nothing to him but like it says lamentations 3 22 it is of the lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not the fact that we were able to make the make the drive here safely the fact that hey, it said it was a thunder severe thunderstorm warning didn't see a drop of, of rain you know um, because his compassions fail not They are new every morning Great is thy faithfulness mm. The Lord is my portion Saith my soul Therefore I will hope in him And, and what better to hope in man Than in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai You know The hope of You know uh, What's the scripture say uh, hope, uh, Trusting in Trusting in Egypt Trusting in a stranger trust, Or trusting in man You know It's better to trust in the Lord Than to trust in man All right. And we see, you know, as people, we saw some Edomites on the way up here. And, you know, of course, we're cordial. We know how to uh, talk to people. But, you know, they, <laughs> you know, they're probably like atheists or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. like, but the scripture says a, a fool, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Like, how can you see all this creation and just think this is by accident? Mm -hmm. Like, this is just, like, this is a miracle, bro. We can see out for miles. Whereas if we was on the ground, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see all that. I don't even know if the camera would pick all that up, bro. You know? It's just, it's just magnificent, bro. The Lord is magnificent, you know? But it says, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And that's essentially what we're doing, man. Hoping, waiting for the Lord, Yahweh Shai, to Shai, to redeem us, man. You know? But... You know, in the meantime, we got to keep moving forward. We got to keep progressing. We got to keep uh, growing, going from glory to glory. And, um, you know, putting on as the elect. Right? You got something? Yep. This uh Wisdom of Solomon 13, verse 1. Surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of the Most High and could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Mm. So scripture saying like because you mentioned you know those, those Edomites and you know they're atheists man they don't yeah. believe in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah yeah you know so that's what scripture says for surely are all men in vain you see because all the all the good and wondrous works that the Lord made right people are still ignorant of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah so it says neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master so people like we're not the only ones hiking this mountain this morning. We saw a whole uh, pack of uh, yeah, a pack of Edomite yeah. women, you know, young girls, you know, Hyenas. going up. They were actually going to the peak that we wanted to go to. We just didn't know the trail to yeah. get up there. Yeah. But we're going we're gonna to come back, Lord willing. Lord willing. But, you know, they, they're not thinking about the Lord, man. Nah. You see? Five young ass, probably like 18, 19, 20 years old, bro. They look young as hell. Yeah. 
So it says, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster, man. See, so it's like, man, like, and the Lord made all this and people still can't acknowledge him, man. All right? Hey, but that's just all the more uh, reason for us, you know, to be grateful, you know, that Yahweh Bashmah Shah has revealed himself unto us, man. You know? Okay. Verse 2, but deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water. Or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. So they pretty much like Romans the first chapter goes into. They turned all the creation into gods. They worship the creation more than the creator, man. You see? They deem the stars or the water or the sun, you know, the wind to be gods. Right, right. It says, verse 3, with whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods. So because it's so beautiful, you know, and, and mankind is so vain and empty. You know, and lacking spirituality, they, they take these beautiful things right, and turn around and worship it, man. And this is why scriptures, well, yeah, scriptures speak about, you know, how Yahweh Bashmah Shah, he's going to, uh, you know, punish, you know, the idolaters, man. What is that? First Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Where idolaters cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Like, people worship, you know, things without even, like, really knowing that they're worshiping it, man. Mm -hmm. You know, cars, you know. But that's all ultimately because the Lord has has left that veil in their minds so where they can't actually see the true image, which is Yahweh by Shema mm -hmm. That's right. Romans, the first chapter, bro. Mm -hmm. It says that's that very thing that the Lord gave them up to those delusions, to believe in the things that are vain, like to, to you know, go after those lusts and to worship creation more than the creator. Like the Lord got these people blinded. Yep. You know? Hey, how's it going, hey, man? How's it going, man? Yeah, there pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, look, look at that cloud moving in. Yeah, let's, let's take a look. Man, beautiful. The cloud coming right at us. Yep. Yep. So verse 4, it says, But if they were astonished, I'm so lucky, verse 3, With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took them to be gods, let them know how much better the Lord of them is. Mm. For the first author of beauty have created them. So there, so Solomon, right? Solomon, he said, "Hey, if you think that that the creation is beautiful, just consider how much how much more beautiful the creator of them is, man." Man, right? So like our our, our feeble minds can't really fathom, you know, the beauty, you know, and the power and the majesty of the Lord. Like, look at this. Like, look what the brother's showing on the camera, man. Like, you see how the clouds is just, you know. <laughs> See how the clouds are just like rolling over the uh, over the mountains? Hey, hey, how you doing? Good morning. Like that's beautiful, man. Like <laughs> 4K camera won't do it justice. Yeah, it really don't. <laughs> it really don't. You gotta be here, man. Uh, wish you was here, brothers. Kind. Uh, you got more on that? Um, oh, you get yours. You get okay. Yours. Well, I got a little bit. Of you yeah, you got. It. Okay. This is uh, this is uh. I don't, well, I'm going to just leave it pointed that way. I'm, I'm all up close in the camera. Brothers can see my pores and shit. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I see the crest in my eye. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra 8, and uh, I'll start at verse 50. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter times shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. You know, and that's exactly what, you know, is essentially going to take place. You know, miseries are going to come upon the earth to, you know, try the inhabitants of the earth. You know, but the elect have the that foreknowledge and that foresight to be able to know how to, you know, maneuver through that in the midst of that and understand why these things are taking place. Understanding the why is huge, man, you know, but let me continue reading on. It says, but understand thou for thyself and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. For unto you is paradise open. Mm. The tree of life is planted. The time to come is prepared. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is builded and rest is allowed. Yeah, perfect goodness and wisdom. And that's uh, essentially the kingdom of heaven, getting those new bodies, everything that comes with it, man. You know that, um, like it says in uh, 2 Ezra 6, it goes into how, you know, essentially um, the faith, you know, that we have right now was that without fruit for a time being, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, you know, well, let me actually just grab it. It says 2 Ezra 6 in like 20, 20, uh, Twenty-eight. It says, "As for faith, it shall flourish; corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, which hath been so long without fruit, shall be declared." Mm -hmm. And that's what's going on right now, man. The prophets of Yahweh Shimei Oshai, 
the true one and living God, man, is 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 you know being declared. That truth is that, you know has been hidden for generations. You know we haven't been you know privy to. It's been opened up unto us, man. So yeah, this part in the uh, first chronicle, just read about that first chronicle sixteen, sing of the heavens. second death roughly paraphrasing right but i say that to say a part of that new song is is preaching and, and fear and you know, we are preaching the fear of the one you know who who created the heavens and the earth mm -hmm. and along with that comes the true names of them man yeah how about you you know because hey me, me and the brother was joking <laughs> and like hey when we, well, we're not really joking you know because uh you have christians they'll like, jesus made all this no, Jesus didn't make none of this. Yeah, how will I show I created this, man. That's right. The Allah Haya. You see? So, this is a part of that new song, man. A, a, you know, showing, a tell, telling, telling our people who, who's behind all this, man. Yeah, how will I show mm -hmm. You know, he's not going to give his glory into any of these other gods. That's right. That's right. The Lord, the Lord, just like with Pharaoh, the Lord allowed all that to take place in the time of Egypt just so he can show his power and be magnified in that day man the lord allowed us build up of people thinking they get away scotch free and they you know that they you know somehow bamboozled the heavenly father and that they got away right but all just to all just to take the biggest l when it's all said and done but i got a little more in the second edges eight um verse 53 it says the root of evil is sealed up from you weakness in the mouth is hid from you and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten, right? All, all that, all the, um, you know, all the corruptible things, like the scripture says, uh, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. All the corruptible things that we know on this side, that we know to be a reality, that we know to be, you know, just the norm in this society, all that shit's going to be dead in that day, man. You know, but it says, um, sorrows are past, and in the end it showed the treasure of immortality. Because that's what's coming to the elect, man. You know, the, the, those new bodies, you know, being changed, being likened unto Yahweh Shai, our big bro, you know, but um, a little bit more it says, And therefore ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. For when they had taken liberty, they despised the Most High, thought scorn of his law, and forsook his ways. Moreover, they have trodden down his righteous, and said in their heart that there is no God. Yeah, and that knowing they must die. So that's essentially the remedy remedy for the majority of people on the planet Earth today. Yeah, living it up while they can, you know, max out those credit cards, blase blase. But ultimately, you know, they they have a sore judgment awaiting them, man, for forsaking the one true living power. You know? mm -hmm. you got I got some more on Wisdom oh, Solomon. Come, on, come. On. Wisdom Solomon, thirteen, verse five. <laughs> Uh, verse 4 but if they were astonished at their power and virtue talking about you know the uh the creation of the lord if, if the people were astonished at his at, at the power and virtue of his works it says let them understand by them how much mightier he is that made them mm. yeah because like you look at these mountains man like you just you just feel like a little ant yeah you know like when we first pulled up to the to the park like bro it's like man i feel small <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so it's like, and he said that earth is his footstool. Man. So just imagine the, the throne room of your how Bashamal shot up in the heavens, man. Bro, if I may, yeah. how much land we covered yesterday? Just driving from DFW to West Texas. Like, bro, yeah. that's so, there's so much land. This is a seven, seven plus hour drive, bro. Mm -hmm. So much land. But, but, but I, I made the joke yesterday. Esau always talking about how the, how the earth is overpopulated. Like, come on, bro. Look at all this, man. Yep. Look at this. Look at all this land, bro. And you can't even see all the mountains. Like, well, right now there's a big cloud coming through, so you can't really see a lot. But, man, that's part of the Lord's creation too, though. Yeah. 
you know and you can just like being around these mountains man uh it also show if you could feel like the uh the austerity of your how about your mouth shot you know what i mean because like oh no it's, it's just it's just it's just it, it's big it's massive you know mm -hmm. <laughs> like it ain't going nowhere it's solid you know and those those are the attributes of your how about your mouth shot man he's solid he's a way well, that's why he's known as the rock scripture says with with the uh with the grain of um or with faith as a grain and a mustard seed we'll be able to move mountains yep bro you know we know those are always those are talking about governments too but shit anything is possible through your how about shimmy man mm -hmm. you know so it says verse five for by the greatness and beauty of the creatures proportionably the maker of them is seen but yet for this they are less to be blamed like Romans the first chapter says is so so even though you know people can see these things they're still they are still to be blamed it says for they peradventure err seeking the most high and desirous to find him for being conversant in his works they search him diligently and believe their sight because the things are beautiful that are seen howbeit neither are they to be pardoned for if they because you do you have some people they do try to come out to nature and try to find the lord you know mm -hmm. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to find the Lord. I'm gonna, you know, right. I'm, take a some it, shrooms. I'm gonna hug a tree. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna hug a tree. Take the, the I'm gonna get grounded. I'm gonna have to take my shoes off. Get grounded with nature. Right. You know. Yeah. So they they trying to. They, you have some people trying to tap into that spirituality, but yet it's he's not still of, to be blamed. It's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Most High that show showeth mercy. That's right. That's right. So it says, verse nine. Verse eight, how be it, neither are they, are they to be pardoned. So he's saying, so they still are not to be pardoned for not knowing the Lord. Man. <laughs> Verse nine, for if they were able to know so much, right, you, you know, because there's, there's a lot of these atheists, bro. They're the ones that they, they know all the names of the stones. They know all the trees. Right, right. You know, brother, hey, we, we trying to learn it, you know, but but that goes to show like these people, they're, they're even much more without excuse, man, because you know more about nature than us. <laughs> so it says for if they were able to know so much that they would that they could aim at the world how did they not sooner find out the lord thereof man <laughs> see hmm. so just being in creation man being in creation that's that's a lesson in and of itself you know that would edify you right there just just sitting back and just you know contemplating man you know of course the spirit got to be on you you know to to do a correct to, uh to meditate correctly verse 10 but miserable are they and in dead things is their hope who call them gods which are the works of men's hands gold silver and shoe of art in to shoot art in and resemblances of beast or a stone good for nothing the work of an ancient hand and it goes into speaking about you know how people worship you know what what mankind makes you see so hmm. ultimately at the end of the day man hey, you got to fear and worship the creator you see, because he's he a hey, the one that created the planet Earth. Though these mountains that we're looking at, this was created by a man, Yahweh Shah, and he's coming back very soon, man, to 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 make diligent, you know, uh, inquisition. Well, he's making that diligent inquisition is happening right now, but he's coming back to to hold everybody accountable for what they've done in their bodies and how they acted towards him, you know, and his creation. But you got it, bro. Kind of, I got some. Um, I thought I, it's it's a heavy it's a heavy point to make. I believe that. That when you said um, when when we pulled up, you, uh, you felt small, and I was like, "Yeah, we're insignificant than the whole." Like mm -hmm. when we, because we look at the Lord's creation, and we could just we're just in awe. Wherein a lot of people, you know, to them it's just nothing. Like it's you know, there's a, there's a different spirit that's tied to that. You know what I'm saying? But this is uh, Psalms 34, and uh, verse 18. Kind of house like. This is this is Psalms 34 and 18. It says, "The Lord Yahweh Ba Shimei was shy is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit." I wish we could grab that word contrite, but I know it means pretty much like uh, broken, broken, like lowly, like just you know. Scripture says that the meek shall inherit the earth, man. I believe it's Shabar in Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Kind of, so like you know broken you know I know I'm, Psalms thirty uh, Psalms uh, fifty one is a uh, talk pretty much says the same thing Psalms fifty one and um oh. it's recording yeah. so like we got cut off there 
I think I'm not sure if it just stops recording after 30 minutes, but I sp- supposedly have an hour and five minutes left of storage in my in my uh, SD card on here. But you know, we got a lot of footage of the you know the hike too. So, but yeah, you know, you got, you got your preset, bro. Okay, yeah, I just read this. this is uh, Psalms 27 and 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. You know? And, uh, you know, <laughs> when, you look at that, when you look at these mountains, you know, you can see a lot of little pavilions inside of them. You know, little caves. You know? And this is how, you know, this is how spiritually is. Hey, the Lord going to, you know, spiritually tuck us away. You know, in, in, in his high mountain, man. You see? In the time of trouble, it says, and he shall set me up on a rock. And hey, we're on the rock right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. You see? So, you know, it's a lot of little spiritual nuggets, you know? Yeah. That you can glean, you know, when you just out in the Lord's creation. That's why Yahweh Shah spoke in parables. You know, using using the earthly things, you know, using, uh, you know, the things in nature, you know, to draw, you know, similitudes to, you know, to the kingdom of heaven. Man, the Lord is awesome, bro. Sheesh. You brothers know in the kingdom we gonna have not these exact mountains, but we gonna have land, man. man our mountains gonna be made out of <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, amethyst, or amethyst, <laughs> amethyst mountain. Imagine all that right there, just amethyst. Sheesh. What's that one stone you like? Uh, what was it black, black, black? Uh, it, it's it's like it's like a little rainbow. Oh, uh, rainbow uh, titanium quartz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fire. Um, La uh, Labradorite is one of my favorites as well. Yeah. Yeah, we could. I guess that's it. Let's go ahead and close out, man. You know. So with that, <clears throat> Lord, which way is the east? Probably. Sure. I wouldn't even know. Yeah, it'll be that way because the sun. Yeah, the sun. Yep, yep. That way. Yeah, you're right. All right. So we're gonna face the east and give all praise, honor, and glory again to. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Kakudash. The bond is again to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that taught us his truth and the do well. And much peace, love, blessings, and many salutations to the elect. Shalom. Shalom.